Magnets, 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 magnets. I've done so much reading about magnets over the last few weeks and my brain hurts and I'm going to try and help you understand them. I don't know everything there is to know about magnets, but the nice thing to know about magnets is no one seems to. They're really complicated. It's really weird. Um, in fact, apparently one physicist, um, predating Einstein, wrote a paper explaining that magnets couldn't work according to physics. And as we all know, magnets do work. Um, and that's because you can only explain magnets using quantum physics. So there we go. Now, I'm not imagining anyone here is wanting a video about quantum physics and what you're more likely to want is a video explaining how magnets affect the sound of your guitar from the loudspeaker perspective. I am very curious to look into how magnets affect the sound of a guitar from a pickup perspective, but that is definitely for another video because there is a whole world more learning to do there. And if anyone's ever tried to explain or teach or shoot a video or whatever like this, you rapidly learn that the thing you thought you knew about, you don't know enough about it to teach anyone about it. So hopefully I've reached that point on this bit of the magnet stuff. Now, this was my uh, chart of Celestian 12-inch guitar drivers. Should we be a bit more metal or Stuart Copeland, depending on how you look at it? Reverse stick. Alnico. Magnets, neo-magnet, 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 and ferrite magnets, everything else. So Alnico are the original loudspeaker magnet. Well, not quite the original. There's, is it, gosh, was it strontium ones before that? But anyway, 1930s, Alnico. Then ferrite magnets, ceramic magnets, they came about sort of uh, World War II era, but then became a lot more popular in the 70s well, the, when the Alnico prices shot up through the roof due to the war in what was then Congo, I think. What is now? Is it Democratic Republic of the Congo? Yes, it is. It was Zaire as well. Anyway, it's that bit of Africa that Europe has done a thoroughly good job of messing up through colonisation and... Uh, it's full of minerals that are really critical to the entire world. Um, cobalt, which you'll find in, well, let's not go down that route right now. But Alnico, ferrite then, and then neodymium, which came about in the 1980s, following some very clever development. And neodymium then became, started appearing in PA and bass and guitar drivers around the turn of the millennium. Now, there's a lot of things to talk about with magnets, but let's focus on the guitar -y stuff. So, I have made a useful chart here to sort of explain things for myself, and hopefully I can then explain it to you. So the difference between the ferrite magnet and the Alnico and the Neo magnets is that Alnico is an alloy of aluminium, nickel and cobalt. A neomagnet is actually an alloy of neodymium, iron, and boron. So it's not really a neomagnet, it's an N E F E B, whatever the letters are for that. Ferrite magnets, however, are. Oh, are they iron? Ferrite? Strontium ferrite? There's basically, they are a powder of various iron related magnetic materials suspended in a clay to make a ceramic. And the key thing about that is it's clay, clay ceramics. They, we know they do not conduct electricity, you know, like porcelain or whatever. They, it's non-conductive, it's an insulator. Whilst Alnico and Neo magnets conduct electricity. Now, what that actually means is that when an electromagnetic field is generated by the voice coil, Actually, we've got one over here. I had it spotted earlier. Voice coil here. That generates its own magnetic field, and that interacts with the pole pieces and the magnet, and generates eddy currents. And those eddy currents essentially mess with the magnetic field and resist the flow of flux through the pole pieces. 
And if you have a conductive magnetic material, it basically ameliorates those eddy currents so they are less problematic and thus produces lower distortion. So the coil is moving in a magnetic field that stays more like it should be and less influenced by those eddy currents that are trying to act counter to the behaviour of the voice coil. So, there's a nice word for that or phrase for that, it's flux modulation. So in a, when you have a ferrite magnet, even if you've designed everything so you've got the exact same flux going through the exact same pole pieces, you know, or you've got everything as close as possible within the realms of physics and engineering, when you apply power and current flow through the voice coil, you will get more flux modulation of the permanent magnetic field and that will cause higher distortion which gives you less detail of your guitar sound in the mid-range and the high frequencies. There will be less detail at lower frequencies but you don't really hear it. What you hear is that lack of detail in the mids and highs. Now I'm not saying all these ferrite magnet speakers here, which is most of these, sound rubbish at all, but I'm saying there is more detail coming through in the Neo ones and the Alnico ones. Now our next point is this thing whereby, gosh I read a good word for it, I forgot what it is, permanence of, no it's gone, it's gone, but basically it's temporary demagnetization by magnetic fields. So this isn't to do with eddy current, so an eddy current is an electrical current that's flowing and it, it itself is creating a magnetic field because the, cu the current is flowing in a circle so you get that magnetic field uh, going in a straight line. This is temporary demagnetization caused by the magnetic field created by this voice coil. So what happens? In a ferrite magnet and a neomagnet we have a very stiff magnetic field. It doesn't budge, it's much more solidly there. Yes, it can be blocked by eddy currents, which is why it affects ferrite. That's the, the problem with your ferrite magnet. Um, I say problem, tonal effect of a ferrite magnet. But with an Alnico magnet, that magnetic field actually gets pushed about quite strongly by the field coming from this voice coil. And the effect of that is that you get reduced force in the coil because what's happening with the voice coil is current flows through, the magnetic field interacts with it and they basically push against each other. So if the magnetic field is weakened by a high current, it gets less pushback. So you play a note and those sharp peaks essentially get compressed and rounded off. And that is what happens with Alnico magnets. So that essentially smooths off the harsh edges, the, the jagged bits in your tone. It's, it's a really nice coloration, which is why Alnico speakers sound so fantastic if you like how they sound. They are very, very flattering. Now, that gives you your smoothed off edges, your flattering tone with an Alnico magnet. And with Neo, you're getting a more honest response. And likewise with Ferrite, you're getting a more honest response in terms of that magnetic field not being temporarily demagnetized by the current flow in the voice coil. But there is another thing to consider, which is related to uh, the Curie point, is the temperature where a magnet stops being magnetic. It completely loses its magnetism. And that was a real sticking point with neodymium magnets and why it took a long time for neomagnets to move into the high power sector. Because simply, you'd put power through the voice coil, the voice coil would get hot and the magnet would stop being magnetic and that was it, speaker dead. You'd have to dismantle the speaker and remagnetize the magnet, which is not a trivial job at all. You know, it requires kit that costs a huge amount of money and especially it's a specialist industrial process trying to remagnetize a neodymium magnet. But nowadays, the speakers we're using have neodymium alloys of a sufficiently high grade and cooling sufficiently well thought out that it's a non-issue. You will destroy the voice coil and burn out everything before your neodymium magnet stops being magnetic. 
Your Alnico magnet, they withstand huge temperatures, 500, 600 degrees Celsius, so, you know, what's that, 1000 degrees Fahrenheit or something. They, they will go really hot before they demagnetize, so you don't have to worry about that at all. Ferrite magnets, however, they do become less magnetic, but not in a permanent sense at working temperatures of a loudspeaker, but in a temporary sense. So if you are playing a loud gig and you're playing loud for a long time, a lot of power going into the speaker, the motor will get hot and the output of the magnet will drop and your sound will become somewhat compressed. You will lose output, you're losing sensitivity of that speaker and you're increasing the Q of the speaker because by reducing the magnetic strength, you're reducing the cone control, which causes it to resonate more at its resonant frequency. So essentially, you end up with a flat response that you might have had, turns into a sagging response with a hump in the sort of boomy upper bass, low mid region. So that is the thing that happens with ferrite speakers at high power. And if you are finding your tone is falling apart at high power, that's a good reason to add more speakers because you'll increase your sensitivity and you'll increase your power handling. So it's a win-win. The other option is to turn down, but you know, we don't want to do that. So they are the three things presented in hopefully a simplified way that explain why ferrite, alnico and neodymium speakers do actually sound different. There is science behind it. Now the truth out there is that you will very rarely find any speaker that is identical in ferrite, alnico and neodymium. So a lot of the differences you'll hear between speakers are related to cones, suspension, voice coil, dust caps, things like that. But these would be there, these differences would be there if you could design a speaker which was identical in all these ways. And you will consistently hear these things. So ferrite speakers are what, well, I'd say, the vast majority of us, 99% of us, are used to as the sound of guitar speakers because they completely dominate the market. Alnico speakers are a lot more expensive and they fit certain sounds. I love them, but the ferrite speakers give you a less detailed and a warmer, richer tone. Your Alnico speakers give you very detailed, but still warm and rich tone, and it's more flattering in the top end. And your neodymium speakers, very detailed, very honest. Assuming you've got the cone right and everything else. These are the, the limitations imposed upon your loudspeaker design by the magnetic material. So hopefully that made some sense. And when you hear or use, I think this sort of thing comes through most when you're using gear. Um, because when you're hearing someone else play, you don't know what they're doing with it. You don't know what they're doing with their hands and things like that. You don't know what they're wanting it to sound like, but how it's coming out despite they're wanting it to sound like that. You don't know how they're changing their playing to adapt to the fact that they're not getting quite the sound they wanted, because we do that a lot. This isn't hi-fi systems. This isn't put a CD in and press play and then sit there on a, in your listening room and go, oh, it sounds like that, and write a boring essay about it. Um, this is, you play music, and we just, we just, we play it. So it's, it's the, the speakers and the amp and the pedals, they're all part of the instrument and it's an interactive, you know, loop with our ears. Well, no, it's that way, isn't it? Sound comes into ear, brain, heart, soul, feeling, hands, instrument, out and round and round and round. So, but you can't, you can't beat these. You cannot get past the fact that ferrite magnets will do this, alnico magnets will do this, and neodymium magnets will do this. And that's where I'm going to stop. If you are a physicist and know about this and want to enlighten me more, please, please shout out in the comments. If you're someone who's used these speakers, any of these, any ones, alnico, any neo, if you notice things, please tell me more. This does seem to be a field that not a lot of people know a lot about. And trust me, if you Google about this, everyone's arguing with each other about the effect on the tone. But I have done quite a lot of listening and done quite a lot of reading and quite a lot of thinking. And I have attempted to download this to you. So, internet, re-upload to me your knowledge, your questions, and so on and so forth. 
and let us continue the enlightenment. Thank you. I've been Alex from Barefaced. Oh, we, we make speakers. They're really good. If you're wondering, you know, guitar, bass. Oh, we've got some ampy stuff in the works. We've got a pedal as well. Yeah. Like and subscribe. Yes, I'm on YouTube. Hello. Goodbye.